welcome back, fellow YouTubers, for some more Planescape Torment! Alright, so we're on a little mission here to find Ingress. And tell her we may have a way for her to escape home. Escape back to home. I believe she was up here somewhere. I could be wrong, I usually am. I haven't played this game in 19,000 years. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. More guys who want to fuck with the nameless one. And we're going to kick the shit out. Morty is like a uh, fucking just little badass skull. He just eats the shit out of people. You know what I'm saying? Isn't he badass? I want you guys to comment on how badass Morty is. the portal to the mausoleum. I don't see ingress. Where is that crazy bitch? Maybe she's more this way. She was up here bitching and complaining. Dabu. Dabu. Who's this? Tout is. What does that mean? There's the crazy bitch. You see Ingress. She is huddled inside her cloak of dirty rags, her teeth chattering. She is glancing fervently around her, expecting to be attacked at any moment. Greetings, Ingress. Hey, you! She squints at you. What is it you want now? No, leave me. No, no, Ingress, I have found someone who will take you back to your home plane. Chill out, bitch. She falls silent. I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Kandarin. He should be along shortly to help you. Trust him, all right? She says nothing, merely nods quietly, her teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back to meet Kandarin at the Smoldering Corpse Bar. Make sure everything turned out all right. Be strong, Ingress. Run around like a crazy little bitch that you are. And now we return south. Looks like I left some treasure here. Oh yeah, don't leave the don't leave the blood clot. You want to always take the bumble clot. Let's see if Candrin has anything to say about helping Ingress. He stands as you approach him. The toothed woman wanted you to have these, he says. Holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out to balance book, as it were, and be damned with the damn things. In the palm of his hands are Ingress's dancing teeth. Then he smoothly deposits them into your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. I have some other questions. Speak, and I shall tell you. Do you know a collector named Farad? Farad, you have to be a collector. How long ago was this? When I set out last, he was but an officious stripling of one of those upper walls. <laughs> Time does change some people. No, Seeker. I don't know Farad anymore. I'm willing to bet. I'm looking for a journal I lost. I've seen no journals lately but for my own. That just crumpled away into nothingness. My apologies. Imagine I have some other questions. What are you doing? I, I am fresh back from negotiation. Negation. Not negotiation, negation. And I am trying to restore my essence before it slips away from me altogether. Negation? What do you mean? His eyes, his eyes slide over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. 
I made the mistake of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to decay in the cycle of death and life. I thought myself protected against the ill effects of the plane with my magic, but I was wrong. The blackness of infinite nothing pressed on my soul, and I was beset by shadows that sought to snuff out my very soul. I lost my way for a time, for an eternity. I nearly lost my existence. It kinda sucked. I could feel my essence feeling away from me. And I am now half gone. Never will I return. Well, how did you survive? How did I survive? He smiles tightly. With a piece of nothing that held back nothing. Nothing can stop nothing, you know? And so I carried nothing in my hand to protect me. Do you plan to journey to the ultimate negation yourself? You have the smell of desperation about you, and so I make you this gift. Hold it in your hand when the shadows press in. It should protect you and your friends somewhat, should they remain close to you. <laughs> he passes you a small black token that looks as it has no dimensionality to it at all. Thanks. Farewell. So, I, I'm not sure if the nameless one actually picked it up. No, he didn't, because he's a dick licker. But you're going to want Ingress's teeth and the negative token. Now, Ingress's teeth, be it as they may, are good weapons for uh, Morte. You examine Ingress's teeth. You can't shake the resemblance to ivory bugs. You get the feeling that they are looking at you, expecting you, awaiting some command. I want you to become a magical weapon. The teeth rattle about wildly, then suddenly settle down. After a brief moment, they begin to emit a soft magical glow. Done. So as long as Morte possesses these, I believe... There we go. Replace his teeth with Ingress's teeth. They are enchanted. They actually go up as he levels. When he reaches level 8, uh, they will be plus 2, plus 2. And when he reaches 12, uh, they will do plus 3, plus 3 and cause paralysis. Right now, since he's under level 8, they only do 1 plus 1. But hey, better than nothing. They're cool. He's got little scarabs for teeth, and that's fucking awesome where I come from. Alright. Now, yes, of course, there's lots of other people you can talk to, but since we're reading out all the dialogue here, I don't want to over-encumber you. I'm going to get attacked by thugs a lot here. Just kill them. Anyone that gets in your fucking way, just kill them. Marketplace, we got a plenty of shit to sell. We got a few more places here to check out. Another one bites the dust. You asshole should probably stop attacking. It's in your best interest. Come chit chat with me a bit, love. fell the rebel Dabu. You see a Dabu, but something about it strikes you as odd. It has the same shock of white hair, the same greenish cast to its skin, the same pair of goat horns. Then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason, that makes you uneasy. You ask the Dabu several questions, trying to get a feel for the rebuses that appear above its head. 
been extremely patient throughout your discussion, giving you easy sentences to translate. After a few minutes, you start to get the hang of it. Feels like you've done this before. Maybe you could help me. The Dabu waits. Who are you? As you're about to ask, you suddenly realize that you already know the Dabu's name. His name is Fel. As if in response, the Dabu inclines his head a bit slightly, and a lone symbol appears above its head. It's a blurry at first, and then resolves into a white oval with a black lightning bolt to it. I feel like I know you, Fel. Fel bows reverently, and then a stream of symbols swirl about its head, rotating clockwise, then counterclockwise. It takes you a moment to translate. This is the first time and not the first time you have come to this place. Do you know who I am? Another series of symbols materializes quickly and sharply into focus above Fel's head. The translation comes to you just as quickly and sharply as the symbols themselves, and as yet you have translated the exact same strings many times before. Yes, but I am not permitted to tell your story. Why not? For a moment there is no response from Fel, then a stream of abuses appears, as if trickling from Fel's mind. My apologies. I cannot, I cannot change the nature of a man. You can explain why, but the last sentence sends a crawling sensation through your skull. Nature of man, what does that mean? The symbols that appear above fell almost mirror the previous stream. I apologize. I cannot say. I see. We we'll have another question for you, Fell. The Dabu waits. What is this place? A slow train of symbols materialize around Fell's head. The symbols take several moments to resolve, starting with simple lines, then fleshing themselves out in breathtaking colors. This is where I tattoo color in life upon flesh and bone. Can I see what tattoos you have? Why, of course, fucker. I hope you have money. And I have 139 copper. That's not going to do shit. He's got all kinds of cool tattoos, which we cannot afford. And he doesn't want to buy shit from us. So that doesn't help. So eventually we will come back to Dabu when we have money to waste. Which ATM we do not. Alright, more battle. Anyone else? I mean, hey, it's a free 65 experience. It's a free 10 copper. Just go ahead and kill him. You guys got anything to say? Because I will fuck you up right now if you do. What I thought. No, really. I will. I'll fuck you up. What do we have here? What the hell is this? Some kind of warehouse. As far as I know, nothing of importance here. Let's get out of here and see if we can move westward. Maybe we can't. Hate load times. We're looking for the marketplace, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Oh, look. Uh, Priest scroll, mage scroll. Oh, here we go. Ring and ring of anger and submerge of will. And power of one. Increases the target strength score by a certain number of points. Alright. 
Submergence of Will. We cast a magical orb of protective energy arises. Bestows AC2 against all attacks and plus one to saving throws. And Reign of Anger. Xerthamon's teachings allow this spell. Some of the magical missile that strikes. Okay, so Reign of Anger is basically Planescape Torment Magic Missile. Fucking thugs don't give up. And that's why they get their ass beat. Wisdom? 19 wisdom? Shit. Shit, nigga. What? All right. See a young woman dressed in tight leather bodice and leggings. She smells faintly of cheap perfume in her face, though she's pretty. She's painted with garish makeup. She smiles coyly as she sees you. Seeking some company, love? No, but I got some questions. Sigh, love. I don't stand here to ask the questions. Oh, fuck you. This attractive, scantily clad little bitch. Pardon me, good sir, pardon. You seem a bit lost. If I may be so bold, will you require services of a talp, perchance? Only a single cup. What's a talp? A guide, sir, you see. Around this part of the hive. Now I'm good on directions, bitch. So I got a cheat book for it. Chat with me a bit, love. All you girls, y'all want to chat. This guy is, he doesn't want to chat. He wants to get fucked up. We gotta talk to the centaur looking bastard. After we kill more high thugs. Much of this creature's body is a combination of man and ram. His head is a mix of sorts. A broad, flat nose, goat ears, and a pair of curling horns. Intricate designs are shaved into his dirty pelt. His massive, four-flanged polearm hangs from a belt harness. He doesn't seem to notice you. Greetings. He turns to face you with startling speed. His eyes dark and suspicious of you. His voice is deep. Not quite human, and heavily accented. Vot you vot, two legs? His hand is closed to his polearm. I'm here to speak with you. I have some questions. He seems to calm down. 
his hand drops away from his weapon. What do you wish to ask me? Do you know of a man named Farad? I know of a few people here too late. This Farad is not one of them. A friend of yours? I don't know really. So why are you so worried of me? You seem sad for a moment. This place, a wretched, unclean place. Full of unfriendly, sometimes desperate people. Not the best place for a visiting Draria, two legs. He shrugs. I have business here. So I am, so here I am. Visiting, you do not live here. The Baria shakes his head laughing. No, no, two legs. No Baria can live in this. Where are you from? I am from the plains of Yisgar, two legs. They are my home. He smiles in fond recollection, as if worn by a memory. What sort of business are you here for? Another time, two legs. If she ever meets in a happier place, I shall tell you all about it. Alright, fuck you. I don't think there's much else to do here. It's just a bunch of angry hive dwellers and a bunch of harlots. Alright, so I've been wandering around for a minute looking for this drunk harlot bitch. The woman stumbles into you, then takes a step back, looking up at you with a half smile. She smells like a distillery. Uh, greetings. Hello. She waves at you, then breaks into a stream of giggles. Hello, big kata. She starts laughing again. Are you okay? She squints at you and puts her hands on her hips and bends over to give you a bird's eye view of her bosom. Don't I look okay to you, kata? Well? She shakes herself, causing numerous jiggles, then starts laughing again. You're the one who looks to be needing some love and care? She pokes you in the chest with her finger for emphasis. You offering? Gives you a mock stern gaze. Yeah, I think I might be if and you be back in the right awful. She presses up against you. What'll it be? No thanks. She pouts. Pucks on you then. See if you get any better from me. You're about to turn away when you stop in your tracks. You just ha suddenly have a feeling that something is wrong. And with this feeling comes a realization that this woman's drunkenness is just an act. As you take a closer look at her, you see the harlot tucking something into her sleeve. It looks like something of yours. Bait the woman into pickpocketing you again and observe her technique. You lean in close, laughing along with her, and as you watch as her hand darts into your purse again, her technique seems to be a distracting the mark with her drunken chatter and her bosom while she lifts the coins from her purse. The sleeves of her dress look to be long and baggy on purpose to hide any stolen items quickly. You make a mental note of her technique, even as her hands make another grab for your purse. Hey, what do you think you're doing? The woman's drunk express and evaporates, and she starts screaming at the top of her lungs. All right, then, you fucking dirty bitch. Drunken hooker. Get that drunken hooker! So we kill the dirty, stinky bitch, and we also gain pickpocketing skill. And we also gain some experience. Not sure if it's shown there. I think it's just the statistics screen. Hmm. Yeah, well, anyways. I'll kill the hooker just for twelve fifty. Got some loose gold here, I'll take that.
There's actually one more person you want to try to talk to before you leave. Actually, who knows, there could be a thousand more people to talk to before you leave. What's cool is the items stay here. We're looking for a Githrazi townsperson. I actually saw one earlier. I spoke to him then. Git turns to face you as you approach. Like Dakan, he has a yellow cast to his skin and a knot fray. His clothing is curious, blend of sharp colors and dull, mud-stained browns. The Git's dead black eyes flicker over Dakan, then you. Greetings. The man ignores you, turns to Dakan instead. He speaks several clipped words in a low tongue, which you cannot understand. His expression doesn't change as he speaks, nor does he make any hand motions, so you can't even hazard a guess at what he's saying. Dakan replies, the arrow flight of words in the same tongue. And the Gizari falls silent. Oh, well, what's he saying, Dakan? The Gizari turns to you to speak, then turns back to Dakan and speaks again, this time at great length. Dakan replies. Sounds like the same arrow flight of words as before. The Gizari falls silent again. Dakan says something else, and the Gizari responds with another lengthy stream of words. Can you ask him some questions for me? Dakan turns to the Gizari and speaks, this time at a slower, more measured pace than before. The Gizari's reply is a short one. What did he say? Your words are known to me. The Gazari interrupts. Face me and speak your mind. I will hear you. Akela drowning. I'm sorry? Your question is a stab in the dark, an arrow without direction. His forehead wrinkles. The answer to this question would fill the mind of an Anarch. There is no top for such an answer. Tell me plainly what it is you wish to know. Let me be more specific. Can you tell me of the Lady of Pain? It is said she's the queen of the city. Her mind is not known to me. Can you tell me about Dakan? He walks with you. His forehead creases. How is it he is not known to you? I was hoping you could tell me something about him. He's not speechless. If you would know him, put the question to him. Do not insult us both by treating us, one, as a statue. No, Farad? No, I don't. All right. Fantastic. What about a book? No, not shit on that either. Cool. This city touches all places. What do you mean? The city has a cage with many doors. Each door touches another place. Why do you call it the city of a cage? Any structure with locked doors is a cage. Locked doors? Every door in this cage is locked. Each door has its own key. Only then may you leave. Where are these doors located? Everywhere. They number as many as the places they touch. Places like where? The doors of the cage lead to everywhere. Every plane. Every world. I don't understand. It is difficult to understand. It is not difficult to accept. Where are these doors you speak of? The doors of this cage lead everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right. Can we get any fucking information from this asshole? I do not know. There's little work here. You can hunt for rats. Or gather the dead. The city pays well for rat tails. Take them to one of their vermin control offices.
Let's ask him what the Akeli drowning means. Know this. When Akeli drowning is spoken, the speaker is telling you to answer your question would serve no purpose. Know that it carries the unspoken intent that the question be shaped so it is more specific. Upon our home plane of limbo, we must shape the plane with our minds of our chaos. And the plane will devour us. Akili was one of the people who did not know herself. Time came upon her when she lost herself in chaos matter of the plane. She knew not how to return to her community, so when she shaped the small island with her thoughts and waited. She waited and waiting she met a traveler swimming through limbo sea. Achilles is said to have called out to the traveler to ask the way home. Only one question need have asked. Know you the way home? Yet she asked, what know you of the plane? The traveler knew much, and much of what she said was new to Akira. Her questions grew, feeding upon answers, until she knew not where she was. She knew not what she must maintain focus. The small island she had shaped dissolved into a chaos matter, and she drowned. It is a lesson that tells of the harm and asking without purpose. Teach me the way! Dakon teaches you some of the common forms of speech. A wise man is said to have wrote the book of Anarchs, while to accuse the other of treason is to remember Villacroix's eye. Alright, so we get some basic teachings from Dakon. Now we can actually talk. Dakon replies in the same tone. The sentence is odd. You have difficulty deciphering the sentence structure, but you think what he said is, there is one by Dakon's name who is not of one of the people. It is said that his mind is divided. It is said that he is Zerth, but does not know the words of Zerthmon. Dakon makes the same reply as before. The tone has changed slightly, but the meaning seems intact. This one is numbered among the faithful. Dakon falls silent, as if to give words time to sink in. We listen. The guest's response is so quick it is almost the force of an attack behind it. You are not certain if it got the entire meaning, but it seems the gift just issues some sort of challenge to Dakon in the form of a question. Zerth, do you obey the words of this human? Dakon's reply is a short one, but his speech is slow. We listen. Tacha, choice has become mine. The gift falls silent for a time. This matter carries the stink of the illithid about it. His eyes flicker. Dakon's face. I see no chains upon you. You speak your mind. How did this blasphemy come to be? Dakon speaks slowly again. The chains are my own. His skin seems to take on an ashen shade as it speaks. It sounds like every word is slowly killing him. An arc of a hundred years, there is no hourglass that can measure the tale. The matter is as twisted as Frahi's roots. Its resolution is one of impossibility that may never come. Dakon frowns, and then his voice strengthens. The one beside me speaks. Will you hear him? The Git does not look at you. His attention focused on Dakon. Dakon turns to you. He will hear you. You will recall the translation. Anyways, once you speak to him, try to speak to Dakon again, and ask him about the word. The chas choice. Dakon's forehead creases and his eyes narrow. I would know how you came to know that expression. You spoke it when we met with the Gizari. I don't know what you meant by it. In an expression that knows many reasons. But tell me one of them. Tacha's choice speaks of one who has no choice in their actions. So when I asked you to speak to Githraza, you had no choice. 
Dakon's blade ripples, and you watch as the edge become gray and dull. His face clenches, and he speaks through teeth. It is not my will to speak of this. Know that your will is my will. When you speak, know I must hear you. Know that your words may stay my blade or guide it to the throat of another. Why? But why? Dakon seems to look through you, as if meeting your gaze is unbearable. Your path is my path. I am chained to you. You my slave? At the word slave, Dakon faces collapses into pain as if he was struck. It is as if the word was a dagger stabbing at the core of his suffering. But why, Dakar? No, it is a long tale, and know that nothing is gained in telling it. I would hear it. The people do not allow themselves to be enslaved to another in deeds or change. If we find ourselves in such a cage, we act to free ourselves, even if it means we must endure another cage for a time. You performed a great service for me. In doing so, you enslaved me. I acted to free myself. Know that I surrendered my word and myself to act in your name until death. But I can't die. That was not known to this one. I surrender my word to him. I surrender myself. Know that there is now nothing left that I may surrender except my life. Know now that I follow you only so I might die. Consider the debt paid. No! Dakon's forehead creases in pain, and his eyes stare through you. It is not your word that carries the weight, and your word will not free me. The word that chains me is mine. The torment is mine. I know in my heart that chains remain. The word will not face them. free them. Is there any way you can be freed? You must die a final death. Yet your path is not death's path. There is no resolution to this matter. I swear I will find one, Dakon. I will find one that sets you free. Dakon's voice becomes ragged, as if he was suddenly becoming sick. No, you have added other words to my words. His expression is pained, and his gaze meets yours. Now you have chained us both. I see. There are other things I will know. And we talk with Dakon about other things here. About the one that betrayed him. I surrendered my word to him. I surrendered myself. The people do not allow themselves to be enacted. Blah, 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 blah. So anyways, you can gain a couple of experience points doing that. And our alignment changed to neutral good. Oh, and we uh, leveled up. Oh, and we're getting attacked by thugs. And when we come back, we'll have another video, and it will be a level higher. Thanks for watching.